The decades-old Boko Chieftaincy conflict reignited on November 24, 2021, and has since left the municipality without peace. Government has imposed a dusk to dawn curfew and other restrictions on the municipality, but the loss of lives and destruction of property continue. Military action in response to sporadic shootings on Tuesday, January 31, left 10 more people dead on Wednesday, February 1. In Parliament on Wednesday, February 8, Defence Minister Dominic Nitiwo said the military had been asked to deal with the Boku situation because the conflict was not about chieftaincy but rather a criminality. So I want to believe, and we are taking the position, Mr. Speaker, that what is happening in Boku today is not about chieftaincy. It's criminality. It's criminals who are operating. And the members of the armed forces to deal with them as pure criminals. I want the members of parliament to let their people know that we are dealing with them as pure criminals. There's nothing called Boku chieftaincy. There is a legitimate chief of Boku. The man process have said they will go to court. The Nigeria has said he will go to court and challenge the matter. If as Minister for Defense, I'm not prepared to tell the truth, the Boku issues can never be resolved. I will tell the truth as it is. Last week, the Upper East Regional Security Council urged residents to remain calm after the military had been accused of killing some residents. But the Ghana Armed Forces refuted the allegations, insisting in a statement that it had to neutralize six armed men who engaged the troops. While commending the security personnel on the ground for working towards security and peace in Boko, we call on them to be more professional and circumspect in the discharge of their duties and be measured in the use of their firearms so as not to kill innocent people. We also urge them to desist from some of the inhumane treatment and brutalities being meted out to innocent citizens of Boko. At all costs, we must avoid actions that will result in reprisals effect from aggrieved people. Between Monday, February 6, and Wednesday, February 9, nine more lives have been lost after all night sporadic shooting. And the National Catholic Bishops' Conference is worried. We members of the Ghana Catholic Bishops' Conference are saddened by recent developments in Boko, leading to the death of 15 peoples and other people sustaining varied degrees of injuries. We are deeply concerned about the deteriorating security situation in the area. We have keenly followed and monitored over the years the protracted conflict between the Kusasis and Mampusis that has resulted in the loss of precious lives and the wanton destruction of property. The conference is of a view that the government has turned its back on the people of Boko. It appears the conflict and insecurity in Boko are gradually getting off the radar of government. The town has become a pale shadow of itself as education, health and social services delivery is adversely affected by the exodus of teachers, nurses, and business people from the town. The government needs to pay attention to the plight of the remnant citizens, remnant residents of the town by ensuring that lasting solution is found to the conflict in the area and should act swiftly to prevent Boku and its environs from becoming a possible launching pad for terrorist groups operating in neighboring countries. But what will the conference do differently if the government fails to act on their demands? The government will listen to this uh, press um, statement and do what is uh, right. But if it doesn't do it, then we may have to walk to Jubilee House with some people from Boko and pick it the place. 
the government will act.